So to start with hairnets. This is to make sure that no particles are left behind. Right. What's going to happen to the lander? My hair falls <laughs> under. Just spontaneously combust. So. <laughs> don't want to risk the mission. XL, we don't want oh, that. Yeah, there's a lot of XLs back here. Come on in. So this is our clean room. This is where we do all of the assembly of our spacecraft. And you'll see right over here is Blue Ghost Mission 1. The Blue Ghost lander is third in line to attempt a moon landing this year. Developed by Firefly Aerospace, the company's part of a new generation of upstarts seeking commercial success in a place few have gone successfully. Firefly is driving a mission armed with $112 million from NASA. Its goal? To develop a reliable delivery vehicle to the lunar surface. One of the things that is a little bit different and unique about CLIPS missions is that we are taking a little bit more risk with each mission, but it gives us more shots on goal. It's the new playbook in the space economy, driven by Elon Musk and SpaceX. The missions that we're seeing right now are costing fractions of what they would have likely cost had they been run by NASA. One-tenth of the cost, according to the World Economic Forum, that's fueling private competition, accelerating production times, and increasing launch counts. We're learning from our experiences with our commercial partners. So it's a whole different way of doing the space program. A program looking to stay ahead in the next phase of a global space race, crewed missions to the moon. This is what's next in the new space economy. getting ready. Okay. So they're chilling in the engine right now. Last little bit. Oh my God, that is incredible. <laughs> they say everything is bigger in Texas. And at Firefly's sprawling 200 acre rocket ranch, these daily engine tests are just a small part of the company's operations. This is our first stage of that Alpha rocket. The second stage is actually on our test stand. The mission here is to build an end-to-end -end space transportation company with each vehicle manufactured and assembled in-house. We launch, we land, and we orbit. And we're unique in that regard. There aren't many organizations out there that would say they do all three of those things mm -hmm. as a purpose. Firefly doesn't just launch rockets and landers. It builds orbital vehicles that stay in orbit, ready to repair, refuel, and relocate satellites. The company successfully launched three rockets into orbit so far. We'll have a lot of the same avionics on this uh, spacecraft that we use for rockets. These right here are cold gas thrusters, and so those are the same ones that we use on rockets. That reuse of materials is part of a push to drive costs down. In 2023, the company doubled the size of its facilities here to automate a big part of its production. This AFP machine lets us build our alpha launch vehicle structures in just seven days and our wow. medium launch vehicles in 30 days, which is a huge improvement over months with the more typical technology of laser-guided hand placement manufacturing. Nine times faster and seven times cheaper, according to Firefly. It's one example of just how quickly commercial space companies are transforming a $630 billion industry. In this new space economy, it's the private firms driving the missions, with NASA as the customer. How much of what Firefly is doing today, being able to own the full stack, is because of what SpaceX has proven out? SpaceX and their presence created a bridge where we went from almost entirely government-funded and owned missions to uh, a commercial infrastructure and a thought process that redefined how do we move with speed to get things built. And if there wasn't the vision to say, why can't commercial industry do that? And what, how would we be able to move with speed in a way that government systems just cannot? If that hadn't been done, well, there's no way we could have taken in, inside of the timeframes we did a, a concept like Blue Ghost and brought it from design to actual production and ready to go. Those timeframes shrunk because there was a SpaceX before us. That 
has saved the U.S. government a lot of money by getting a commercial business involved that is not only doing this for NASA, but is now a launcher across the board for commercial and other government payloads. And it's spawning off all kinds of new businesses. Now we're gonna take it out to the moon. You talk about the cost savings for the government. What kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, I'll give you an example on uh, the Department of Defense. Uh, I asked General Hyten, the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, at the time just before he retired, and that was a couple of years ago. How much has the fact that competition has gotten into the launching business, SpaceX came into the scene, drove down prices, how much has that saved the Department of Defense in just your launches in space? And he said $40 billion. And that was two years ago. That lower cost and ability to move quickly has transformed the business of space. Today, companies like SpaceX are launching every 34 hours. That's nearly 260 launches per year. The investments are pouring in. The space economy is now forecast to reach $1.8 trillion in roughly a decade. Growth has largely been limited to launch systems and satellites, but NASA's leaning on these private companies to take them even further. The agency's awarded $2.6 billion in grants to develop a low-cost transportation system to the moon to take NASA's research to the lunar surface. We can survey the south pole of the moon before our astronauts ever get there. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket. We saw two attempts already. One, astrobotic, that had a valve problem. And then we saw intuitive machines. We can confirm, without a doubt, as our equipment is on the surface of the moon. Had a soft landing on the South Pole. It sent back all kinds of data. So we're learning from our experiences with our commercial partners. Firefly is next in line. Its Blue Ghost lander is set to launch in the second half of 2024 on board a SpaceX rocket. We have 10 different payloads on this mission. Um, we have uh, everything from a device that samples lunar regolith to something that's testing GPS capability on the way to the moon. Um, as well as a drill that's going to drill into the surface. That mission alone will cost roughly $100 million, according to the company. Back in the 1960s, NASA paid roughly $660 million for similar missions when adjusted for inflation. This is the big rocket. This is Artemis One, And just to give you an idea of how big this thing is, look at the size of the spacecraft. Wow. For four astronauts, you have to have all that fuel to get them to the moon. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition, and liftoff of Artemis One. It's all laying the groundwork for the Artemis missions, NASA's program to return astronauts to the moon. The first crewed flight in partnership with Lockheed Martin and Boeing is now set for 2025 after a delay. What is NASA trying to accomplish this time around? We've been to the moon half a century ago. Why go back? Because we want to go to Mars and beyond. We need to learn to live in a very hostile environment to be able to supply ourselves, to invent, to create, in order for us to be able to send humans all the way to Mars and ultimately Beyond. NASA faces plenty of competition globally. More than 100 lunar missions are planned by government and private companies this decade, according to the European Space Agency. China is the biggest competitor. It's aiming to land its own astronauts on the moon by 2030. Why is it important for the U.S. to be first, particularly in the South Pole? I think that since it's very clear that China has announced that they are going and intend to go to the South Pole of the Moon 
Uh, they've said that they're going to set up a research station. All that's good. But I think from past experience with China on the face of the earth, I think it's not beyond the pale that China would uh, suddenly say, we're here, you stay out. And so that's why I think we're in a space race. Uh, to get there to the very promising south pole of the moon. Why? Because we think there's water there. And if there's water in abundance, then there is rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen converted from water into rocket fuel. And that gives us a gas station on the South Pole. Commercial revenues already make up roughly 80% of the global space economy today. That share is expected to get even bigger, raising concerns about relying too much on the private sector. In the past, you know, NASA very much has been a civil organization that works very closely with the Department of Defense. And many of the technologies that go into space are controlled by the U.S. federal government. The risk is that you start to put more and more of that into industry, and you're now beholden to the expertise and experience of industry, kind of in the same way that you are with um, a lot of the aerospace and defense industry as it exists today, where you have a few set of very powerful primes who are great at what they do, and they develop some of the most amazing advanced technologies out there. But, you know, the, the government no longer owns and controls a lot of those assets. Martinez also says there's an added risk to publicly traded companies. Intuitive machines stock tripled in value in the lead up to its moon landing, but it fell more than 30 percent once shareholders learned the lander had tipped over, preventing its full mission from being completed. This industry is very difficult very speculative and there's a lot of risk in it and it is hard to go at the pace that you need to go and to take some of the risks that you need to take if you're focused on near-term value for shareholders. Firefly's remaining private for now, adding speed to its equation. In 2023, the company launched a satellite into orbit 27 hours after receiving the order, shattering the previous response time of 21 days. I just keep thinking that you know, what you hear from commercial companies is we're more nimble, we can move quicker, you know, yeah. we're more aggressive. Is safety being compromised in all of no, this? No, you can't lose missions. You can't endanger people. There is no business plan that survives any amount of speed and agility if you're hurting people uh, and, and you're not protecting a customer's investment. Companies are exploring opportunities beyond unmanned missions to the moon. Startups Astrolab and Intuitive Machines are building their own vehicles with NASA funding to shuttle Artemis astronauts around the lunar surface. Firefly's racing ahead with its own plans. The company's now building a medium-sized rocket with Northrop Grumman so it can launch its lunar lander without the help of SpaceX. And it's moving into lunar missions independent of NASA. We believe there's enough demand out there right now for us to schedule a Firefly run lunar mission using that platform behind us with 100% commercial payloads on it. Now, no it, NASA funding. Uh, no NASA funding, but isn't it interesting, NASA might be one of those tenants. NASA might say, hey, great, huh. glad you're running that mission. We'd like a spot. And that's where this needs to go. Commercial industry, much like we plug into the wall and say there's electricity there, commercial industry needs to be running that transit and the government, instead of being the prime contract driver, will be, uh, will utilize that capacity. There's most definitely enough demand on the commercial side to, to tell Firefly, the indicators are there, let's announce that mission. How important is it to get it right the first time? Nobody is limiting our capability to, um, hey, it'll be great if we just, if we just make an attempt. We, we're gonna put that lander down exactly where it needs to go and the Mary Chrysium on the surface of the moon. That's the mission. That's what we signed up to. That's where everybody's focus is. We're in these to participate in these missions now, um, learn everything we can so that when the commercial lunar market evolves, we're ready uh, then to scale it. I think our focus, though, is making sure that no matter how many winners and losers there are, Firefly's one of the winners. And high degree of confidence, that's going to be true. <laughs>